how is it that one can move their feeding window or place themselves onto a different schedule of intermittent fasting? It's very clear that one needs to provide a transition period in order for that to happen. You should allow yourself a transition period of anywhere from one week to 10 days in which you shift your feeding window by about an hour each day or so. And then once you establish a feeding window that feels comfortable for you and that you think you can maintain over time, that you simply maintain that feeding schedule for at least 30 days, but ideally you would do that indefinitely. Now, this turns out to be important based on data that they've gleaned from this my circadian clock massive experiment that they've been doing where people are entering the times that they're feeding and eating. The interesting thing to emerge from that very large data set in humans is that when people log their feeding times, oftentimes they think they're eating in an eight hour window, but they are actually eating in a much broader window. However, even for people that are very good about restricting their feeding to a four or six or eight hour window, if they're very strict about the start and stop times of when they ingest calories. One of the findings that's really been important to note is that almost every individual has a lot of drift in when that eating window resides in their 24 hour period. In particular on the weekends, people are either extending or shifting their feeding window in a way that makes it seem that they've traveled to another time zone and are eating according to another time zone. And this is extremely important. If you are eating within a very strict or or semi-strict feeding window, but that feeding window is migrating around from day to day or five days a week, you're really organized about when that falls. Let's say for sake of example, from noon to 8 p.m., noon to 8 p.m., Monday, noon to 8 p.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, noon to 8 p.m., Thursday and so forth. But then on a Saturday, it's becoming 11 a.m. and you're ending it early. Or perhaps you're starting early in the day on Sunday. You're having brunch that starts at 9.30 or 10 and then it's extending out still just eight hours, but it's shifting around. That can cause disruptions in these circadian clock mechanisms that cause disruptions in the downstream effects of eating that are taking at least two to three days to recover from. So as important as how long your feeding window is, is where that feeding window resides in each 24 hour cycle. And perhaps even more important than that is that it be fairly regular where that feeding window resides. Because even if you have a very short feeding window, if it's drifting around from day to day, that actually offsets a number of the positive health effects of intermittent fasting. So again, we don't want to create any overly obsessive or neurotic focus on this. I think that most all people could benefit from a time restricted feeding schedule, but they should really think hard about what they can stick to on a regular basis and understand that they tend to underestimate the feeding window that they actually are partaking in and that they should place that feeding window in a portion of the 24 hour cycle that they can be consistent on most days. And I want to emphasize most again, because we are not laboratory mice. We have access to food pretty much 24 hours a day. The important thing here is to establish a feeding window that you can comfortably manage, meaning that on average, you can obey a six hour feeding window or an eight hour feeding window or a 10 hour feeding window. And then to place that feeding window in a social and life context that you can manage on a regular basis. 